All right, so now that we are into while loops, let's go back and talk about code tracing again and why it's so important and so useful when we're working with something like loops. So let's take a look at how we're going to do this. So this is code tracing. Let's take a look at this first example. We have an integer x equal to 5, and as long as 5 is bigger than 0, then we'll go ahead and print to the console x, then we're going to increment x down by 1, and loop back again and check our test case at the top. Take a moment and create yourself a test table or a trace table here. So we're going to have x and our output. And for some people, they also like to use our line number. So which code line number they use over in another column. So take a moment, pause the video, and see what the output is, what the last output of this program will be. Okay, so now let's go ahead and go into it. So we first set our variable x as 5. We go ahead and step into our while loop. This evaluates to true, so we go ahead and print our x, and we get 5. Next, we decrement x by 1, so now x is 4. Good. Now we uh, hit the end of our while loop. We jump back up to the top. And we check our test case. Is x still bigger than 4? Yeah, or 0, pardon me. Yes, it is. Good. We step inside and we print x and we now output 4 on a new line because we're using println. We decrement x to 3 and repeat the process. x is bigger than 0. We print x is 3. We decrement x 2 still bigger than 0, we print 2, and then we decrement to 1, and now we begin to check things because we're getting close to our boundary condition here. So x is still bigger than 0 when it's 1, so we're going to print 1, and now we are going to decrement x is 0, and... We check, is x bigger than 0 when it's 0? No, x is not bigger than 0 when it's 0. So this fails, this now becomes false, and we move on down the code to our next program. So in this case, our last thing that we print is the number 1, but x has a value of 0. An important thing to remember, that the value of x is different than what prints the last run through. Let's try another example. So here we go. Integer x equals 5 again. Imagine it's a new program. We're rewriting x equals 5 while x is greater than 0. Now we're going to place the decrement of x in front of or on top of the line before our out dot print line. Pause the video right here. Set up your trace and see what the output and the value of x is at the end of this cycle. Okay, let's try and set up our trace here. So again, if you need the line numbers, you can go ahead and put them there, but for a time's sake, I'm going to go ahead and avoid the line for the moment. Out, and I'm going to put the x. <clears throat> okay, so value of x starts at 5. Now, this is a little bit different. What is my first output? Mm, well, we got to go line by line. Don't make the mistake of thinking that it's so similar and going ahead of yourself. Follow the steps of the code. First, I decrement x. So x now becomes 4. And then I print 4. So I don't print 5 like the last time on the first step, on the first out. Now I print 4. Okay, let's go ahead and go through. We're going to do all the way down to the boundary steps. Pardon me, that's a 3. We step through. 3 is still bigger than 0. We decrement. This prints out 2. And uh, we get to 2. We decrement. That becomes 1. We print out 1. And 1 is still bigger than 0. We get down to this boundary case. We decrement 1 
to zero, we print zero. And now we print zero, we go back up. Zero is no longer bigger than zero, so we have the same values. So in this case, our output and our x end on the same value simply because we switched the order of it. But this time we weren't able to print out five. So instead of printing out five to one, we now printed out four to zero. Same number of print statements, but a different number set is print, printed. Okay, let's talk about one more boundary case that gets it a little bit more interesting. Let's try this one more time. Set up your code trace and try this example right here. What is the output and what is the final value of x? Okay, let's get into it. Here's, uh, let me keep the order the same. So this is out and this is our x. Our x starts at a value of 5. And we have our x greater than or equal to 0. Is 5 greater than or equal to 0? Yes, great. Then we decrement x. Then it asks us to print x. Good. Then we hit the end of the loop. We go back. Is 4 bigger than or greater than or equal to 0? Yes, it is. Good, then I decrement x, which is my next line, and I output 3. Then I go back up, I check my, uh, <clears throat> my condition here. Is 3 bigger than or equal to 0? Yes, it is. So then I step in and I decrement x. This is now 2. Uh, and I print out x, so I print 2. I go back up and I check my condition. Yes, is 2 bigger than or equal to 0? Greater than or equal to? Keep saying bigger, but it should be greater than. Yes, it is, so I decrement 1, print out 1, and then I come down and I print line. Uh, and I already did that. Good, I go back up. Is 1 bigger, greater than or equal to 0? Yes, it is. So I'm going to decrement on the next line. I'm going to print that out. And now, is 0 bigger or equal? greater or equal to zero. Yes, zero is equal to zero. So I'm going to step in one more time and I'm going to get negative one and I'm going to print out negative one. So in this case, you see that it, because we added the equal sign, as we've discussed before about how the um, opposite of greater than is less than or equal to because we need to capture that same number in the middle. By adding the equal sign, we actually add one more step to the loop. So that adds one more, right? And because it adds one more, we get into the negatives. And the reason that these are the same number is because I put the decrement before my print line statement. So whether or not you have greater than or greater than or equals to changes actually the number of times that your loop runs. And this would be difficult to tell sometimes without code tracing. And this is where code tracing really comes in. A note about code tracing for me personally, I really like using the slashes through variables when you're updating the value so that you know not to look at a previous value you are looking at the bottom most valuable and getting rid of previous ones. But I don't erase them because I want to be able to look back and see the history of that variable's value if I need it for debugging in the future. Okay, that is code tracing. Next, we're going to get into some algorithms that might need code tracing in order for us to solve them. See you guys in the next one.